underwater volcano erupting infrasound shows formation of gigantic bubbles. This is something new. It's by Bob Yurka, phys.org. Today's article, a team of researchers from the USGS, U.S. Geological Survey, and the University of Alaska found that they could estimate the size of bubbles that form from underwater volcanoes by listening to infrasound produced by bubble formation. In their paper published in the journal Nature Geoscience, the group describes their study of the infrasound that was produced by an undersea volcano erupting near an Aleutian island and what they learned from that. The Aleutian Islands, as we know, is the arc of volcanic islands stretching from Kamchatka, the northern part of the Pacific Ocean, towards Alaska. The researchers note that studying undersea volcanoes is challenging due to their remoteness and the unpredictable nature of the eruptions. In this new effort, they report that Perseverance and luck allowed them to learn something new about such eruptions, that the bubbles they create are far larger than anyone imagined. Over the years, there have been accounts by sailors of the sea swelling just prior to the release of gas and particulate from volcanic eruptions below the surface. One such report came from a crewman aboard the Albatross during an expedition in the waters around the Aleutian Islands. That was back in 1908. And this sailor, the crewman, reported the ocean swelling into a dome that neared in size to the U.S. Capitol building. Then two years ago, an underwater volcano named Bogoslov erupted. It also is part of the Aleutian chain. It's in the process of building an island. The Bogoslov. It was great that the scientists had in time placed underwater microphones close enough to the volcano and these microphones picked up mysterious infrasounds produced during the eruption. And after the studying of these low frequency infrasounds, infrasounds the researchers found that they were produced by underwater bubble formation. They also found that these bubbles oscillated. That indicates that they were changing in size. Further study of this infrasound allowed the researchers to follow the progression of the bubbles as they made their way to the surface and to measure how big they were. When the single bubble reached the surface, it pushed the water above it into a dome. Then, as the bubble was exposed to the change in pressure, it expanded and contracted several times before finally collapsing. And once it collapsed, the gases and other material in the bubble escaped into the air creating a giant plume. The researchers further reported that they measured bubbles as large as 440 meters across. That's about, it's over a thousand feet across. Can you imagine a bubble over a thousand feet across? Far bigger than the U.S. Capitol Dome. That's amazing. So uh, we're going to read another article having to do with research team discovering a third type of volcanic eruption from New Zealand, Victoria University. They describe what its members believe to be a third type of volcanic eruption. In their paper, published in journal Nature Geoscience, they describe a type of eruption that is neither explosive nor effusive. So what could it be? On land, when a volcano erupts, it does so in either violent fire explosion or as a seeping flow of hot magma. Up to now, scientists believe that the same was true for eruptions that occurred underwater, submarine eruptions. In this new effort, the researchers found evidence that some underwater volcanoes erupt in a way that is neither, and instead they erupt in a way that is in between. This new discovery came about as a team was studying pumice from volcanic eruptions that occurred in the Macaulay volcano, which is far beneath the waves in the southwest Pacific Ocean. They noted that the samples they spotted uh, they had sported evenly spread bubble cavities in the inside, and not so even bubbles near their surface. So that pattern, not generally found with rock spewed from 
explosive volcanoes, bubbles from pumice in gases as gases inside try to escape. In general, that happens when volcanic rock is blasted from its source. Now, after more analysis and some out-of-the-box thinking, the team concluded that their pumice sample from a submarine eruption to its unique characteristic was because of something that happened under uh, undersea, of course. And they suggest that it had to do with the volcano erupting on land. It would have blown its top because of the incredible pressure exerted by the weight of the ocean above it. It was not able to do so, and instead it grew slowly into a mushroom, mouse-like mound that rose and grew slowly from the volcano. Then it broke apart, creating small balloons of material they call blebs. And because of the gas in them, they are lighter than uh, the ocean water, so they tend to rise to the surface. And as they rise, they continue to form bubbles inside, which lead to the evenly spread patterns the team found in their sample. That's what they concluded. But on the surface, the blebs are cooled by the ocean water, which leads to the odd shape of the bubbles near their surface. So the team calls this third kind of eruption Tangaroan a combination of the name of their ship and the Maori god of the sea. The abstract says many submarine caldera volcanoes are blanketed with deposits of highly vesicular pumice, typically attributed to vigorous explosive activity. But it's challenging to relate volcanic products to specific eruptive styles of submarine volcanism. And here we document vesicularity and textural characteristics of pumice clasts dredged from the submarine Macaulay volcano in the Kemdatic Arc, southwest of the Pacific Ocean. We find that clasts show a bimodial disruption with corresponding differences in vessel abundances and shapes, as I said. We find a sharp mode at 91%, vesicularity, and a broad mode 65 to 80%. Subordinate class show gradients in vesicularity. You know, as I'm reading this, okay, well, you understand that it's a difference because of the pressure and uh, the way it grows. Because of the pressure, it goes slowly as it comes up. Uh, the surface of it is uh, different in the, in the pumice bubbles. But, you know, here in Greece, we go swimming in the sea, you know, and many times we see pumice floating on the waves of the sea. And we're, and we're saying, where is this thing coming from? Out of nowhere. I mean, it seems to be spread out over the sea. And it comes, you know, as the waves come towards the beach. And you see little pieces of pumice, bigger and smaller. You say, where is this thing coming from? I would imagine that is from underwater volcanoes, because, you know, we have a lot of underwater volcanoes in Greece, plus volcanic islands like uh, Santorini, Nisiros, Milos, and other areas, and even underwater vents. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if that pumice was coming from areas that we don't know of, that are perhaps uh, somehow discharging pumice. And then that floats onto the top. That's amazing. It just now came to my mind. Because we were always asking ourselves, where is this pumice rock coming from? Amazing. I'll leave links below for you for this on fist.org. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube 
channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.